And here we go again. This is the first in a more advanced probability video series, which we're calling More Probability. And this is about the one minus technique, which you will find out about by the end of this little video nugget. Here we go. Do a little recap. We learned that probabilities add to one. And that's true under two conditions. One is that all the possibilities are included, and another is that they're mutually exclusive. Let's think about this for just a moment as kind of a review and look at it with sort of area model diagrams. For the first bullet, all possibilities are included. Suppose this represents, this white square represents all possibilities, and we divide that up into various possibilities using any of the techniques we've had so far, and we have these four colored rectangles, but look! there's part of it that's not covered. So if we haven't covered all the possibilities, the areas of the rectangles will not add up to the area of the white square. The probabilities will not add up to one. So there's something left out. Now let's look at the mutually exclusive problem. Suppose, once again, this has an area of one. This is all possibilities. And we map out a couple of the sub-possibilities, and now, watch, we're going to bring in this reddish one, and uh-oh, but it covers. There's an overlap. So we have three probabilities for the reddish one, the greenish one, and the bright green one, but because of the overlap, the sum of the probabilities is greater than one. Okay, so if that's the case, it doesn't add up to one. But most of the time when we're doing our thing, things add up to one just perfectly. So let's do a problem. This is related to the one we were doing in class. If you roll two dice, what's the probability that at least one of them is a six? So we could do an area model, and that would look like this, where we've divided up rows and columns into one, two, three, four, five, and six. The six die rolls are uh, all the same probability. They're equally likely, which gives us a total of 36 equally likely combinations. And I've colored in lavender all the ones that have some six in them. And if you count them up, there's a total of 11. So 11 out of 36. 11 36ths is the probability of any six. Okay? Now let's do the same thing with the tree diagram. If we do it with the tree diagram, instead of making six branches, I'm only going to make two. There's the probability that you get a six, and the probability that you get a one, two, three, four, or five. All right? Probability of a six is one in six. Getting everything else is five in six. Notice they add to one, right? Because it's either going to be a six or it's not. That's the first die roll, and now we can add in material for the second die roll, and that's one sixth and five sixths and once again for the third die roll. And if we look at all of the twigs of this tree, the ends of the branches, and calculate their probabilities, there's a 1 probability that you get two sixes, which is something we know, right? And it's 1 sixth of 1 sixth, so it's 1 sixth times 1 sixth. The next twig down is 5 sixth of 1 sixth, which is 5 out of 36, just multiplying across 1 times 5 is 5, 6 times 6 is 36. Same thing for the next one, except it's reverse order. And then there's the bottom one, which is 5 times 5, 25 out of 36. 5 6 out of 5 6. I've color-coded these. The green ones are the ones with any 6s in them. And the maroon one at the bottom is the one with no 6s. So let's look at the green ones. If I add the three of them together, I get the probability of any 6 is 11 out of 36. 5 plus 5 plus 1 which of course is exactly the same as we got with the area model. It has to be. It has to come out the same. But let's look at the bottom one. It's this path here where first you roll a 1 through 5 and then you roll another 1 through 5. The probability of that is 25, 36, and that is the probability that there is no 6. Okay, so if the probability is of no 6 is 25 out of 36, we can use the idea that things add to 1 to make an important conclusion. That is, the probability of any 6 is 1 minus, ooh, that's the 1 minus thing, 1 minus 2536. And this 2536 is the same one as this one. Okay? Very important principle. So let's shrink this down and bring in the summary. Here's the summary, the big idea. It's easier sometimes to find the probability of something not happening 
So you find that probability and subtract it from 1. Okay, you may need to freeze this and ponder it, ponder this deep identity, but that's the big idea. So let us move on just briefly, and we're moving on into the homework. We're going to extend this 1, 6 uh, problem and say, what's the probability that if you roll three dice, at least one is a 6? Now, this is the homework question. And so we're going to start with the two dice problem. You already have the two dice problem solved. So don't start from the beginning. Start with that. You have it right here in this video. So start with the two dice problem and extend it to solve the three dice problem. And at the end, you could make all the branches and add up all the green ones, but don't. Do the one minus calculation. In fact, you may want to do both, but do the one minus calculation. Make sure it works.